Welcome back to the channel and another podcast family. Paul, Peterhead, Scotland, glad to be here. Today we're in the fourth chapter of Ecclesiastes and a glorious portion of the sacred page it is too. Many are the thoughts in a person's heart, friends, but the counsel of Yahweh Elohim, the Elohim Hayashirel, that does stand. The steps of the person are ordered by Jehovah. Jehovah openeth his hand and satisfieth every living creature. All human beings are simply the hand of Jehovah. The wicked are his sword. Not a hand or a foot moves on this planet without Jehovah. Did you not know? Have you not heard? If you're listening to this and you didn't know these things, friends, I would suggest you spend more time in the scriptures. The scripture of truth cannot, has not, and will not be broken. The sum of God's word is truth. The entrance of God's word bringeth light. The Son of God, Christ Jesus, is the life inside of you. Christ is currently filling the whole planet. All things were formed for Christ, with Christ, by Christ, through Christ, and for Christ, and all things serve Christ. Christ is every man, woman, and child upon this orb, living and dead. Christ is Lord of the living and Lord of the dead. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 And I returned, and I saw all the oppressions that are done under the sun, and behold the tears of the oppressed. They had no comforter, and on the side of their oppressors was power, and they had no comforter. Then I praise the dead who are already dead more than the living who are yet alive. And more fortunate than both is he who hath not yet been, who hath not seen the evil work that is done under the sun. And I saw all labour and all success of work, that it is man's jealousy of his neighbour. This also is vanity in pursuit of the wind. The fool foldeth his hands together and eateth his own flesh. Better is a handful with quietness than both hands full with labour and pursuit of the wind. And I returned and saw vanity under the sun. There is one alone and without a second. Also he hath neither son nor brother. Yet is there no end of all his labour, neither is his eye satisfied with riches. And he saith not, for whom then am I labouring and depriving my soul of good? This also is vanity and a grievous occupation. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labour. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth and who hath not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have warmth. But how can one alone be warm? And if a man overpower the one, the two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Better is a poor but wise youth than an old and foolish king who knoweth no more how to be admonished. For out of the prison house he came forth to reign, although he was born poor in his kingdom. I saw all the living that walk under the sun, with the child, the second that should stand up in, in his stead. There is no end of all the people, of all that stood before them. Those, however, that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this also is vanity and a striving after the wind. Oppressions, vanity, 
the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of unity and having having help in your life. Those are, those are the themes of this chapter, oppressions, vanity, the importance of having help and encouragement and fellowship in your life with other peoples. Whether that's in terms of a, rela a monogamous relationship uh, or um, friends, acquaintances. So it's very important when reading scripture, friends, to see the Lord Jesus Christ. You can find Christ in, in virtually every chapter of scripture. Um, and uh, this is no exception. We, we will we will come to that. Um, um, I, I would say um, that Solomon is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ in ascension. Uh, exaltation and glorification uh, because Solomon entered into all the works of his father David. David is a wonderful type of the Lord Jesus Christ before the cross. Solomon, as I've said, is a type of Christ in resurrection, ascension, exaltation and glorification, having entered into uh, his finished works, his accomplished works of eternal redemption. So you see, Solomon entered into all that his father had accomplished, as it were. And um, there are some certain limitations with types, but, but that, that's a general. Uh, when we say a type, we mean that a person, a historical person, features of their character uh, and circumstances and experiences reflect the character, circumstance, experiences of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all we mean when we say someone's a type of Christ. Uh, quite an important principle to understand. And of course, Moses, uh, Gideon, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, the 12 sons of Israel, uh, the Apostle Paul, the disciples. Uh, these were all types of Christ, you see. Um, anyway, so when it says, I return and saw all the oppressions, it's an insight into the mind of Christ Jesus, understanding the oppressions that men go under. And indeed, the, the chief things that bother men upon the earth in time is oppression, uh, vanity and weakness, you know. And that's what bothers bothers men, you know. And uh, and many many men and women are motivated about such things, you know. Over the last uh, eight months since the wicked uh, Mohammedans uh, brutally invaded and ravaged, raped and burned to death and tortured and chopped up men, women and children, uh, over twelve hundred of them on October the seventh, twenty twenty four, in a gruesome and wicked invasion by uh, the government of Gaza, Hamas, against uh, uh, civilian, uh, innocent Israelis. Since that time, we've seen all these uh, uh, foolish, feckless flip-flopping lefties marching the streets, shouting out slogans about circumstances thousands of miles away that nine out of ten of them are completely clueless about. And it's just anti-Jewish, anti-Israel hatred. You know, the, they've not been on the streets for the hundreds of thousands of Yu-Gi-Oh Muslims um, that are imprisoned and oppressed in China right now. Uh, they've not been out on the streets with the over 100,000 human beings that, uh, that Bashar al-Assad has slaughtered in Syria in the last dozen years. Uh, they've not been out on the streets with terrible things that Saudi Arabia have been doing to, to the uh, men and women in Yemen, etc. You know... Um, so, but there they are, you know, and it's uh, m most of those protesters would have various sins and delusions. You know, the majority of them, for example, would be against the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of them would be sexual perverts. Many of them would be drunks and drug addicts. Persons uh, deluded uh, and bedeviled uh, with various sins manifested in their lives, you see. So the persons like that, they feel themselves uh, oppressed, as it were, by the wrath of God. So they look for identification in, in, in causes and things like that, you know. Uh, and also many of those persons on the streets, they would be deluded with the religion of climate change, for example. You know, uh, many of them would be into like other conspiracy theories like the world's flat, you know, and the governments. And that has been deceiving us all these years. The world's really flat. You know, or they would think that there's like 
uh, some kind of chip in these vaccines, you know, and all this kind of stuff. You know, they have various delusions. But anyway, um, I digress back to the portion of scripture. So I, I would say that what you're looking at is an insight into the mind of Christ, but also a very interesting insight into the mind of a man upon earth in time who sees all the oppressions that are done under the sun um, and the tears of the oppressed. There's a beautiful hymn. Uh, I felt every teardrop when in darkness you cried and I strove to remind you that for those tears I died. And Jesus says, come to the fountain, stand by my side. I know you are weary, you won't be denied. I felt every teardrop when in darkness you cried, and I strove to remind you that for those tears I died. So you're very much entering into the sensibilities of the ascended Christ in this book. Um, and uh, uh, in that regard, Christ uh, was concerned about the oppressions under the sun uh, and the tears of the oppressed. They didn't have a comforter, of course. The comforter is one of the great descriptives of the Holy Spirit, principally in John 14 to 16, the paracletos, the helper, the teacher, the intercessor, the guide. Alos Paracletos, the Lord Jesus said, I'll send you another comforter. Alos Paracletos. Alos is a Greek word that means another of exactly the same type. It has been said one divine person went up and another divine person came down. The Lord Jesus went up, the Holy Spirit came down. So it's very interesting to contemplate these things. And on the side of their oppressors was power. And they had no comforter. Now, all, all, all a true Christian has in truth is the Holy Spirit and the scriptures. That's all you really need, friends. You, you don't need men to teach you. You don't need religious groups and men with wages and dresses to teach you things. You, know. you, you just need the scriptures and the Holy Spirit. That's all you need. And that's all you have. You know, and the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, is brought into experience in your lives that will ultimately result in physical immortality for hundreds of millions of true Christians throughout history. But there will be many like those foolish virgins uh, in Matthew. The, there's ten virgins, that's ten persons keeping a, a degree of moral chastity in their lives. They knew it was a time of moral darkness. They all had lamps, Right. But only five of them had the Holy Spirit. Right? And it's not just a nice story. The five that didn't have the Holy Spirit were damned. They were lost. But they were persons that had a commitment to Christ in some measure. And it was a time of moral darkness. They each had lamps. But they had some degree of commitment. They were spoken of as being virgins. But they didn't have the Holy Spirit. If any man have not the spirit of Christ Jesus, he is none of his. Let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So, all power and authority is given unto the Son of God. Christ has said to his true followers, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. So it's very interesting, and I suppose it gives an insight into the, the mind of Christ in terms of rescue and redemption and relief. The sinners, um, there's a great portion of scripture in Isaiah, I believe it's in the 40s of Isaiah, where it says, I wondered that there was no intercessor. Um, um, and another translation has it, uh, that there was no umpire. You know, and in Job we, we have, who shall mediate between me uh, and God? How shall a man be just with God? And um, Jesus says, Behold, here am I, send me. You see, and in Isaiah 9, 5 and, 6, 5 and 6, we have, 
Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his peace, of the increase of his rule, there shall be no end. He doth reign on King David of Israel's throne, upholding righteousness. Our God shall accomplish this. So you see, here, I would suggest, friends, uh, in Ecclesiastes 4, one, you very much have the mind of Christ in seeing all the things uh, upon the earth, the oppressions, the tears of the oppressed, and that they had no comforter. Now, that word comfort, a fort is like a castle, a strong place. So, come fort, you see. And so it's God's strength, uh, God's spiritual, emotional and mental power, all physical Mental, emotional, spiritual power comes from Jehovah Elohim, you see. Then you have this, I praise the dead who are already dead more than the living who are yet alive. More fortunate than both is he who has not yet been or who has not seen the evil work that's done under the sun. And I saw all labour and all successive work. Well, let's stay with verse 3 first. So you, you often hear people say that. You hear women say, oh, I wouldn't want to bring a child into this world as it is. You know, and that's a very um, sad and solemn statement, I suppose, you know, but you do hear people say that. Um, and it's very interesting, evocative to, to contemplate that, that a man would think that someone that hasn't been born is better off than someone that has been born and has died. And better off than someone that's alive, you know. And again, this comes down to the motivations of life. What do you do in your life, listeners? What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis to maintain your contentment? What really floats your boat? What motivates you in your lives, friends? Is it righteousness, goodness, and truth? Is it helping others? Have you found your niche, your place? the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, how you can encourage, assure, and comfort others, friends. Read the scriptures, read them aloud. There's great power in the scriptures, friends, good consolation and comfort, and you're declaring the very voice of your creator. You're declaring the very word of the one who is inside of you. You're declaring the very voice of the one that gave and sustains your life. You're declaring the mind, will, and counsels of the one that's keeping you alive when you read the scriptures. You see. Now, I saw all labor and all successive work that it's man's jealousy of his neighbor. This also is vanity in pursuit of the wind. And we, we have this phrase in Britain, keeping up with the Joneses. You know, and a lot of men are concerned with self-image with self or how others, how they think other people think of them. <laughs> um, persons uh, judge their insides by other people's outsides. They, they judge themselves about how they perceive other people. And this matter of self-image and self-worth um, is, is a vital matter upon earth, you know, human beings have poor self-image because of the curse and departure from Elohim Yohar and proximity of the devil uh, and sins, you see. When human beings are still in their sins, if they're not cleansed from their sins in the blood of the Lord Jesus and filled with the Holy Spirit, then chances are they'll have various fears and delusions. Um, and uh, uh, the prime feature of that is low self-image because they realize they're at enmity with God and themselves, you see, because God is the life inside of them. Elohaya is, uh, is a divine name. It means the God of life. Hayayi, H-A-I, is the Hebrew word for life. Hayi. In Japan, for hello, uh, for, for yes, they'll say hi. In English, we'll say, oh, hi. Well, that's the word for life, you see. Um, and, of course, Elohim Yahweh is the most high. The most high. Now, 
I saw all labour and all success at work that it's man's jealousy of his neighbour. This also is vanity in pursuit of the wind. So a lot of human beings are concerned with worldly prestige, you know, and uh, keeping up with the Joneses. And, and you know, uh, um, a lot of men are concerned about their training shoes, for example, um, or, or the logo on their jumper or their T-shirt, you know, or their car. And there's nothing wrong with having nice clothes, but the prime thing about clothes is that they're clean. That's the prime thing. And, you know, that uh, a lot of human beings that don't have Christ Jesus, they're obsessed with idolatry. You see, if, if God and the Lord Jesus isn't God and the Son of God to you, listeners, then I'll tell you what will happen. Your own opinions, your own circumstances, human beings and the devil will become God to you. You can either get right with God or you'll be deluded and your thinking, your opinions, your circumstances, human beings around you and the devil will be as God to you. That's how it works. And of course, there's a huge uh, scale between uh, those two uh, uh, descriptions. Man's jealousy of his neighbour. What a thing. So being at enmity, hatred, enmity. This also is vanity and pursuit of the wind. The fool folds his hands together and eats his own flesh. Well, you can either eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of God, Yeshua HaMashiach, or you'll be eating your own flesh and destroying yourselves and you'll ultimately be found culpable and pulpable uh, for the death of Christ 2,000 years ago, friends. The fool folds his hands together and eats his own flesh. Cursed is the man that trusts in the arm of flesh. Blessed is the man that trusts in Jehovah. So if you fold your hands together, friends, in this scripture, um, that speaks of self-centeredness. Uh, you're not reaching out your hands to others. You're not reaching them out to God. You eat your own flesh. You, you destroy yourselves. When men sin, they destroy themselves. Better is a handful with quietness than both hands full with labour and pursuit of the wind. A lot of men are in the ground, friends, and they they spent their lives many hours each day, six, seven days a week working. What far? What far, friends? Well, a rich man's wealth is his strong city. Men see money as being their saviour. That's part of the delusion. Human beings see cash and gold and silver and rubies as being salvation, as being deliverance, as guaranteeing them peace and safety and well-being. Better is a handful with quietness than both hands full with labour and pursuit of the wind. And I returned and saw vanity under the sun. So you can see here, friends, we... The two central themes thus far is, is oppression and vanity. Oppression and vanity. For any of my younger listeners, vanity means like emptiness, things that don't have any value in them. Of course, a lot of persons that are oppressed, they, uh, they end up in vanity. The only freedom from oppression is the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we've got a different theme here now. Um, this is like the uh, second uh, part of, of the three parts of this chapter, if you like. A different theme, verses 8 to 12. 
Um, there is one alone without a second. Also, he has neither son nor brother, yet is there no end of all his labour. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. He saith not, For whom then am I labouring and depriving my soul of good? This also is vanity and a grievous occupation. So this is talking about a man that's on his own. He doesn't have a second or a son or a brother. Yet he's continuously working and his eyes not satisfied with riches. And he doesn't realise it. He doesn't say to himself, who am I working for? And depriving my soul of good. This is also is vanity and a grievous occupation. So this is a man uh, that doesn't have children or family. And yet he's continuously working. And he's not satisfied with money. Two are better than one. They have a good reward for their labour. is self-explanatory. They can each, if they're both working, they can share uh, what they purchase with get acquire with their wealth. And also if one falls, the other one can pick him up. Um, if someone overpowers one, the two can withstand him. And really the message of that uh, is mankind without Christ and mankind with Christ. That's that's the deeper meaning of of that, friends. Um, a human being without the Lord Jesus Christ um, is lost. But a human being with the Lord Jesus Christ has uh, the reality of physical immortality in view in the near future. Um, and also, whatsoever thing your hand finds to do, do with all your might, do in the name of the Lord Jesus, you see. So if you're working for Christ, if you're working for God, um, then you have a good reward. And if you fall, the Lord Jesus will pick you up. But war to a human being that doesn't have Christ who falls, there's no one to lift him up. And then we have the last section of this chapter, better is a poor but wise youth than an old and foolish king who knows no more how to be admonished. For out of the prison house he came forth to reign, although he was born poor in his kingdom. I saw all the living that walk under the sun with the child of the second that should stand up in his stead. Now, this is all about Christ. Um, this is all about God's counsels in the Son. And um, this really is a special insight into the Father and the Son. Nobody uh, knows the Son except the Father. And nobody knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son is pleased to make him known. If any human being doth not have the Son of God, they do not have the Father. And you might say, well, I know, I know, uh, I, I know the Father. Well, if you do, it's only by the grace of the Lord Jesus. Oh, and I know the Son. Well, nobody knows the Son in fullness except for the Father. See? And it says here, better is a poor but wise youth than an old and foolish king. Who knows no more how to be admonished. Now I'm not suggesting that it's a description of God as an old and foolish king. But certainly if you think of Christ in resurrection as a man. Um, a wise youth. You might say it's a very interesting and precious uh, verse that you can think contemplate yourselves friends. It's really about the counsels of God and what's been accomplished in Christ. See, all God's counsels are in his son. God made one man at the beginning. God has one man out of death. Everyone who's ever or will ever live came forth from that one man. And ultimately everyone, hundreds of millions of humans that will have physical immortality in the near future, it will be the result of one man. See, that's what real Christianity is, understanding these simple things. Um, and then you have this, out of the prison house he came forth to reign. Well, 
Well, it's talking about Christ out of death, Christ out of the tomb. Very precious. Out of the prison house he came forth to reign, although he was born poor in his kingdom. So when Christ came out of the tomb, you know, uh, what did he have outwardly or naturally speaking? And then you have this, I saw all the living that walk under the sun with the child, the second that should stand up in his stead. And that, of course, is speaking of Christ. A very precious description. With the child, the second that should stand up in his stead, the second man, the Lord from heaven. The first man was of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. There is no end of all the people of all that stood before them. Those, however, that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this also is vanity and a striving after the wind. So to special insight into the finished work of Christ from the perspective of time. Um, very, very special. No. Well, friends, I do so trust that was helpful. Please do listen to the other podcasts on the channel. We'll be back soon with the broadcast. Um, God is good and gracious and faithful. Shall not the judge of the whole earth do righteously? Stay strong as always, friends, in the scripture, in the spirit, under the blood, in the truth, declaring the full name, the Lord Jesus, the Christ. It's indicative of where a professing Christian is, friends. If they just use the word Jesus or Christ, that's certainly not an evil thing. But it shows you where someone is if they use the word the Lord Jesus. That's good. If they use the full name, Lord Jesus Christ, that shows you that they are getting close to the kingdom of God. The Lord Jesus the Christ, Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach. Baruch Hava Hashem Adonai Yehovah Elohim Verivon Ha'olamim, the Sovereign of the Universe.